So moving on, moving on. I want us to discuss briefly this issue with this delegation from the U.S. that is scheduled to begin a visit to Guyana, a fact-finding mission to Guyana today. That is what we were told. A fact-finding mission of some of U.S. Um, officials are supposed to visit today. And um, first of all, if they let me welcome them to, um, to Guyana. And let me hope that you get the facts. You know, as we have said on this program, um, Uncle Fraser, the former commission, used to say facts are stubborn things. They are stubborn things. No matter what you do, the facts are going to be there to face you. And I read a statement from the government. The government said that they are not going to, um, well, basically cooperate with this facts finding um, delegation. Let me read a little part of what they say. I, I found it very amusing. God has said the government of Ghana notes from publication on social media that a delegation from the United States of America intends to travel to Ghana on Monday, November the 13th, 2023, for a fact-finding mission. Then they go on to say, this delegation and the intended visit appears to have resulted from a conference organized by Rick Ford Burke, a Guyanese residing in Brooklyn, New York. During the month of September 2023, Bork organized a so-called conference on Guyana in Washington, D.C., to which the government of Guyana was not invited, but which was attended by members of the opposition. It was a so-called conference, and they wanted, they wanted to be invited to a so-called conference. Imagine that, yeah? And then they go on to say, and this Bork is wanted by law enforcement agencies in Guyana for a number of criminal offenses, for which he is charged, including extortion of Guyanese businessmen. These charges are pending before magistrates court in Guyana. They said work is charged. Well, this is the first time I heard this. So let me say, let me start off by saying, as I've said, I and all know uh, brief for work. Work has been doing an excellent job um, representing himself. But certain things strike me as being very strange. I recall repeatedly the second vice president, Barrett Jack New, on his, um, his weekly press conferences. He called Bork a criminal. He said Bork lived in a basement. Bork is a con man. He said all kinds of things about con man. But this same basement dweller, this same criminal, seems to be able, according to them, to exert a lot of influence on lawmakers in the United States so they can come for a fact-finding mission. This is amazing. This is amazing, according to them. This man is a nobody, right? He's a nobody, he's no good. He doesn't work anyway. That's what um, Barajak do claim from time to time. And this man, according to them, God is saying that this old, this old fact-finding visit is as a result of what Burke has been agitating and doing. And then they go on apart to say, let me read this part. I found this amusing too. They say any delegation that is interested in fact finding in a fact finding mission, or the problems that Guyana and Guyanese have faced historically, and in the recent past, must inquire into the following: fraudulent elections in 1968, 73, 80, and 85, the massive violation of human rights and freedom of the people of Guyana during 28 years of dictatorial rule between 1968 and 1992, the abuse violence and killing of forces opposed to the government, including the assassination of Dr. Walter Rodney, a world-renowned historian and a, and a black political leader, and Father Bonard Dark, a Jesuit priest. They said also they should investigate widespread racial and ethnic di discrimination between 1968 and 1992, rampant com corruption, mismanagement, and racial discrimination between 2015 and 2020. But let me say some, this thing, let me say this. They talk about massive violation of human rights between the 28 years, 1968, 1992. What happened to the massive violations of human rights between um, 2000, when you had that um, uh, jailbreak and the spree, up to 2008, when dozens, perhaps hundreds of people were summarily um, killed? The most troubling time in recent history in Guyana was that period. But they, 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 they're not mentioning that. They talk about... Um, Abuse, violence, killing of God, of, of Asasheva Walter Rodney, a, a black political leader. What happened to the killing of their own Saturday Osa in 2006? Um, the Minister of Agriculture at the time, 
his sister and his brother and the security guard who were killed. Government never had an inquiry, never had a commission of inquiry to, to, to find out, to get to the bottom of it. They blame it on, on, on um, some criminal gang and people said otherwise. And there was never any inquiry to get to the bottom of the killing of their own minister. Even as recent as the anniversary of the death, the, 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 the parents, the, sorry, not the parents, the son, have been calling for um, some transparency and for closure in this matter. Even when recently Dr. Lon Chan was um, buried and the second vice president made a, a tribute and he said certain things which caused his son again to call out for an uh, inquiry into the death of his father and, and these people. So they are talking about that. And we talk about political assassination. What happened to uh, Ronald Waddle, who was assassinated um, in 2006, January, I think it was. And the evidence in a court in New York, in the Roger Khan trial, it was revealed that they, they, it was an organized um, assassination. A government minister was a complicit uh, in that. But no, but they're not talking about that. They're not talking about that. So they, they, they're very selective. And they talk about white, uh, widespread ethnic discrimination between 1968 and 1992. What happened to the discrimination since then? So many public servants since um, post-2022 have lost their jobs. So many people have, have had to face trumped up charges, including your truly, yours truly and uh, put before the court. Oh, you don't want to hear about that? They talk about rampant corruption and racial discrimination between 2015 and 2020. The most rampant corruption in the history of Guyana is taking place now. You had a case where a man, and that Mr. Conway wrote about it in, in, in papers today, a man was able with a stroke of pen to reduce 214 million US dollars to 214.4, I think it was, to 3 million. You want to tell me that is not corruption? And they're talking about um, rampant corruption. And I'm going to read the, the, the mission of the people a while ago, before a while from now. But let me bring in Mr. Conway for him to have his say on this thing at this stage. CC, I sure you would have read this, ma. What is your take? Government and cooperating? Well, like you, Paul, I hold no brief for Rick Ford Bork. I hold no brief for any political party. I'm not a member of any any, any political party. Eh? And I... I never voted for anybody since I was entitled to vote in 1973. But I believe in that in freedom of speech, it's enshrined in, in, the, in the Constitution. And when we look at it, you know, Second Vice President Jack Dio, he said Rick Fordbrook lives in a basement. He's a child molester and attacking half him. He's a criminal. He has several matters before the court in Georgetown. And he also saying that he is the person who influenced or who organized this visit of this, this fact finding, we call so called visit. And even when the first time in, in, in Washington, when, when Bork, yes, apparently had influenced the, the meetings, the, 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 the government rushed before. They rushed to Washington before to, to, to maybe to try to nullify what would have taken place with, 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 with the op opposition. And now the people come in, fact finding, and they say they're not talking to them. This was an opportunity where they could like where they could lay the case, where, 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 they, where they're saying hey, that what, what Bork and others said, what the, the shallow minister, shallow attorney general minister have totalized, come and talk it. Bring your evidence if you have evidence. Bring bring your evidence, but no, they didn't talk them because of Bork. Perhaps it was somebody else. And then the allegations they're making. Paul, you mentioned some. What happened with the killing spree? The, the period we used to call the the troubles on East Coast. At one time, I I, I commanded the, the East Coast during the troubles, and we used to call Boxon the Gaza Strip. We used to say they did the Gaza Strip things happening in the Gaza Strip. Well, what happened with Roger, Roger Khan? Well, what, 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 what happened with, with the Phantom Squad? And all those killings that take place where the, the, the family can can find closure for, 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 for the death, death of, of, of their loved one. So many things happen, happen and all happen under 
Barrett Jack D appeared of, of, the, of the president and 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 I know we're trying to place blame on, on others they should face the people but if they want to talk to the people they give the people an, an opportunity to talk to more people to reach more people and they're going to get the facts because the facts are right there and as you see you say over and over again facts are stubborn thing according to former the late commissioner Henry Fraser so I, I I'm, I'm not surprised that they said they're not going to reach them I'm not surprised at all no no the, the type of people that we have there yeah but nothing I, I I too I'm not surprised I'm not surprised um and again here we say you have a case where allegations are made and the people pointed out I'm going to read what is like the terms allegations are made they are coming to do a fact finding in other words so here so what is the problem the allegations are made and they went on to say in in um, one of the releases that the president has denied um these things yeah but the people are coming now to to to, to um find out for themselves right but no they don't want that because Bork they say organizes this thing this man who lives in the basement this man who is a criminal and you know the interesting thing and this man who they referring to a criminal and committed crimes in Guyana has not been in Guyana I understand for the past 25 years the man has not set foot in Guyana for 25 years but he's a criminal um he, 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 he extorting businessmen and he get charges that is what they're claiming I have never heard this part about charges uh before but they're claiming this in the release that charges are pending before the magistrate court in in relation um, to this man if you are so certain of your innocence and that these things are made up why do you not take the opportunity to go and lay your case no they don't want that they don't want that they don't want to be confronted with an opposing view and as you rightly said when the conference this so-called conference that they call it was organized they run out in front to meet with the same um people in washington to put out their story and they are so naive as to believe that the story that they put out the people would have swallowed it hook line and sinker but no the people had another view from the opposition now all right you get two conflicting views so the people are going to come they call themselves an independent group and they are going to investigate what is wrong with that what is wrong with that but i can't face up to the truth and hear what the people say about the, the, the thing according to the release from the u.s fact finding mission the decision to visit Guyana was prompted by presentations by members of Parliament, Royce L. Ford, David Patterson, Don Hastings Williams, and Catherine Hughes at the Washington Diaspora Conference, where accusations were outlined by the leadership of a large section of the Guyanese populace. This, in addition to a public missive issued by, by Ford, a shadow minister of legal affairs, which was published in Kaicho News, as well as calls made by way of a formal request for a fact-finding mission to assess allegations of discrimination, mar marginalization, and displacement. Then they went on to say, the release noted, and I quote, in a world where equality and justice are paramount, the delegations stand united in their commitment to uncovering the reality behind these allegations. Their mission is fueled by a deep-rooted belief in the fundamental rights and dignity of every individual, regardless of their race, or background with a keen determination to address these pressing issues head on the delegation will leave no stone unturned they aim to gather comprehensive and reliable information engaging with local communities organizations and governments and government officials further it informed that the mission aims to thoroughly assess the validity of the allegations and to provide insights uh, provide insight on whether Guyana PPP government is in adherence to democratic norms and the rule of law. The allegations of racial discrimination and human rights violations have cast a dark shadow over the nation, threatening the very fabric of the society, the release um, said. The release go on to say, the release said that it is not an official visit on behalf of the United States government. Instead, it is an independent, unbiased fact-finding mission in which the findings will be compiled and presented to the country of Guyana, the Biden administration, and the United States Congress, the Congress, also the Congress of um, the Congressional Black Caucus, and the United States United State Department. It, the quote here to say, it is our desire 
that the outcome of these findings will assist in the commitment to transparency and accountability which, will, which free and democratic societies should function, in which um, they should function. Another release on November the 10th from Dan Hagler, she's one of the persons on the mission, said it is important to note that all allegations from the opposition have been vehemently denied by President Ali and the PPP government, who have provided numerous reports, documents, and articles to counter the claims. The president purports that the allegations have no merit and are fueled with lies by disgruntled individuals who are trying to create chaos. They go on to say the release said that the delegation is interesting, is intending to use the inside gain from these meetings to inform and guide discussions with relevant leaders in Congress and the White House upon their return to the United States. Again, what is wrong with an investigation? Allegations are made. They run out, and the people are fair enough to say that the president has denied these allegations. But so you can just take it at face value. All they're doing, they're coming to do their fact finding, and they're going to interact. They said um, they intend to interact with the government, individuals, and um, organizations. I am sure by now that the government telling the individuals not to meet and not to interact with these people. I am sure because that is their modus. They are not going to participate. And they are going to tell the private sector people excuse me, that they should not participate as well. But I can tell you, a lot of people are eager to participate and to present facts to the mission. They are a fact-finding mission. People are eager to participate and to present facts. But at the end of the day, whether the government participates or not, the people are going to come. They are going to do their investigation. They are going to submit the report. And I believe that they are missing an opportunity. And the reason why they are missing the opportunity, because they don't, they, they, they can't defend certain things. As we say, I mean, they put in the release, they're talking about, um, they, what, they're talking about violation of human rights and all of that. There is no other period in this country where people's human rights were violated than in the period under Barat Jack, the older 2000 period. People turned every day, they pick, they pick up the papers. People were turned up killed. People were kidnapped. People were tortured. Even a US um, representative, Lesnia, was kidnapped at the golf club. Yeah, I forget that. Even that. So if you really, if you really want to go back, they gone back to 1962, I suspect. Jack Dioga go back to 1892 with the arbitral award. You should go back all the way there. So um, the people are going to be here to find out. And I hope that they have the necessary linkages to speak to the people who will tell them as it is. No sugar coating. Tell them as it is and provide evidence. I continue to say, this whole, it's not only about saying this thing happened. Provide evidence. You do a little research, you're going to find a lot and lots of evidence. A lot of people in this country are still grieving. People are, are still grieving for the, 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 the missing ones, the, the ones that were killed innocently and so on. We always remember Shaka Blair in Boxton, executed. And there are so many others. Waddle, I mentioned uh, before. More re recently, Orrin Boston, uh, Boston um, at, at, at Dartmouth. You had or, uh, this boy, Quindon Bacchus. You had the guy in the car um, award. You had Kevin Andrews. You had the, uh, the one, um, the person who said to be aided, who had aided Smalley from the, the thing. We saw the photograph of the man being very much alive with his hands behind his back, presumably, and cuffed. And then a couple of days after police release that the man attempted to snatch um, God, all of those things must be investigated. What are they afraid? What are they afraid of? What are they uh, afraid of? Let me bring you back, CC. Um, uh, forget this some comments. CC, what are really afraid of, Mark? Can you tell me? They're afraid of accountability and transparency. Those are two words, maybe that they, they, they don't want to hear at all. Accountability and transparency. Here is it: the people coming in, and it's not only people from Washington, you know across america several states they come in here on a fact finding they call it so-called so-called fact finding organized by by by, by both we, we, we gotta be open open up 
let the people come talk to them you have an opportunity to defend your cause don't just say 